Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. So we're continuing with our exploration of how we can leverage the VBA object model with inside of Python. Um, but something that kind of was nagging away at me was, you know, I could write the code, but I always really liked it if I could write the code and then just run it as is. And so in other words, I wanted to create almost like a VBA editor environment where I could just type my code away and then run my code and then see the results into instantly without having to save a workbook or, you know, close the workbook and all that kind of fun stuff. And so I started thinking about it and I started, you know, exploring a little bit and I think I found a way that you guys will appreciate where we can actually write the code in Python and then execute it real time into an active workbook that we already have open. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. We're going to see how we can basically write our Python code in a Jupyter notebook and then leverage the Jupyter notebook so that way we can write our code and then execute it instantly inside the workbook that we're currently working out of. So the goal is really to recreate this VBA editor, but in a Python environment. So with that being said, you can already see that I have a Excel workbook open. That's pretty obvious. Um, the goal is to just play around with it a little bit. We're going to add some cell values. We're going to format some cells and then just add a couple formulas in here just to kind of get our feet wet and see how we can do certain things. But the neat thing about this is I'm not going to close this workbook. I'm going to simply keep it open as is. I'm going to write my code and then we'll run it instantly from our Jupyter Notebook. So with that being said, I'm going to jump from my Jupyter Notebook. And then from here, uh, with Jupyter Notebooks, we basically break, break our code into cells. And those cells contain different types of statements. Now, the cool thing about these cells is I can run each individual cell independent of each other. So what that means is I can put my code in the first cell, run that one, break off and create a new cell, put some more code in that one, and then only run the second one. So I don't have to run any of the code in the first one. We'll see why this is advantageous when it comes to working with the active instance in Excel. But with that being said, let's get started and start writing our code. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna import our library, and it's the same one as the other videos. It's simply the win32.com dot client and then from here we're going to create a new instance well we're not creating a new instance we're actually getting the active instance of excel on our system perfect and then from here what we're going to do is when we get this active instance i'm going to store it in a variable and then from that point going forward, I just have to reference the variable and that's basically referencing the Excel application. So I'm going to create a new variable called Excel app and we're going to set this equal to the win32com.client.getActiveObject. So we're going to pass through the getActiveObject method and then we're going to pass through a string and the name of the application or the object that we want to get. Well, in this example, it's simply the Excel application. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a cell below, and if I press Control Enter, it will run this section of code. So this is basically this cell of code, <laughs> cell of code, this code that belongs in the cell. And so if I press Control Enter, it ran it. Now in this example, nothing happened because it was just simply getting an instance of it. But now that I have an instance of Excel, let me get the workbook that I'm currently working out of in my Excel application. So this one will create a reference to the Excel workbook that I want to work with. And so I'm gonna create a new variable. We'll call it Excel workbook, and then we'll set it equal to the Excel app. We'll go in the workbooks collection Books, and then I'm gonna have to pass through the index. I could also pass through the name, but I'll keep it, you know, show some variety. In this example, I'll do the index. I'm gonna pass through two. Now, if you watched my videos about how to work with workbook, the workbooks collection in VBA, we know that the index is simply determined by the order in which the workbook was open. And people kind of ask this, why'd you pass through a two? 
there's only one active workbook that we have. You have to keep in mind, your personal macro workbook is still a workbook. And every time you open up an instance of Excel, that is the first workbook that is open. So if you want the workbook that you're currently working out of, you have to pass through an index of two. And to show that, we'll simply put the name. And so we'll print it out. And if I press Control Enter, we can now see that this is my workbook, my test workbook dot XLSX. Now, if I do one and I press Control Enter, you can see it's my personal macro workbook. That's why I'm passing through a two. And hey, even the cool thing is I'm running this section of code without having to run this section over again. That's the cool part. I can do everything here and then run it real time. Okay, so now that I have an instance of my workbook, I need the worksheet. And then with a, when I have my worksheet, I can simply get a range of cells. Now I could technically do this in one line, but again, just for demonstration purposes, let's just kind of run through some examples. So we'll get the worksheet. And so we'll create a new, work, new, new variable called worksheet. And then this one will be equal to the Excel workbook. We're gonna go in the worksheets collection and then we're gonna pass through the index. And so that's the order in which they appear in the workbook. Well, in this example, we only have one, but then if I wanna make sure that I have it, I can simply print out the name, sheet one. Perfect. And then from here, what I can do is I can reference a range of cells. So get a range of cells. And so I'm gonna set a new variable, Excel range one equal to the Excel worksheet. I'm gonna go into the range object and then I'm pass through the range that I want to work with. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the value of those range of cells equal to a thousand. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap this over because I want you guys to see it real time. Let's run it and see what happens. Bam, it wrote all the Excel values into my workbook, but here's the cool thing. I never once had to close my workbook. And a lot of Python modules and stuff like that, a lot of times we have to either close our workbook or we'll have to open it read only or something like that usually. Now, with this particular library and with Jupyter, this allows us to write our code and execute it real time so that way we can immediately see the changes and then basically either verify or prove wrong what we were doing was either right or wrong. So this is why this comes in handy is now we can do all this stuff real time without having to close, open, all that stuff, save our script, rerun our script or anything like that. We can break our code into segments and then test each individual segment. That's what I think is super cool about this process. Okay, so with this one, let's go through and loop through this range of cells. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically format these individual cells based on how they appear in the loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna count each item in my loop, and then if the count is greater than a certain number, it will set the, uh, the formatting a certain way, and then if it's not, if it's less than that number, then the formatting will be set a different way. And so how do I do that? Well, the first thing I need to do is I have to have my initializer and we'll set that equal count equal to zero. And then I'll say for cell item in Excel range one, what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna increment my initializer. And so I'm gonna say count equals plus equal one. That is basically like writing count is equal to count plus one. This is a shorthanded way in Python. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if greater than five, background color blue, font white, and bold, just like that. And then from here, what I'm gonna say is, if the count is greater than five, Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna format our cell. So we're gonna say cell item dot interior. So the background color is equal to 255. That is, I believe, blue. And then we're gonna set the font dot color index equal 
to two. And so that will set the font equal to white. And then I'm gonna set the font.bold property equal to true. And so that will make the font bold. And then what I'm gonna say is, hey, if it's, basically if it's less than five, or well, sorry, if it's five or below, then put it equal to red, set the font equal to white, and then change the font to Calibri, because right now it's Arial Nova. And so I'm gonna say cell item dot interior dot color is equal to 1671680. I believe that's the index for red. Uh, I have to look back at my notes, but that's kind of one of the downsides when we have to in Python, we can't pass through, at least at this point, I haven't been able to figure out a way of how we can pass through the built-in like VB red and stuff like that. We actually have to pass through the um, index color and stuff like that. So that's kind of the unfortunate part at this point is especially when it comes to formatting with colors might be a little bit more challenging, but I'm gonna keep exploring that one and see if I can find a better way. Um, and then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the font color index equal to two. So again, just turn it to white. And then I'm gonna set the font dot name equal to Calibri. Okay, so I have all the information that I need in order to basically run my code. So I'm gonna, again, press control enter. And as you can tell, real time, it went through, it formatted my cells. Uh, it set the top one equal to blue. So I guess this one is blue and then this one is red. So I got a little bit mixed up. This is the red one. This is the red one. This is the blue one. That's kind of the downside. <laughs> Remembering index colors is not easy. <laughs> but hey, you know, you got what you got. Okay, so that's just doing some basic formatting. Let's just do two more examples. We'll add a sum function to the worksheet. So we'll do it two different ways. We'll do writing an actual formula to a cell, and then we'll use a built-in worksheet function that exists in VBA. And so what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna put this over, and we're gonna say, uh, add a sum formula to range, what is it, D4. We'll just put it in D4. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Excel worksheet. I gotta make sure I spelled it right, it's all the same. Okay, Excel worksheet range D4 dot formula R1C1 is equal to string equal sum uppercase bracket R square bracket negative three bracket. Oh wait, not that one. C bracket negative two. I'm gonna expand this out. Uh, dun -dun -dun. Colon R square bracket one C square bracket negative two. Okay, let's try it. Press control enter. Perfect, so it looks like it still worked. I'm gonna run it again. Control enter. Perfect, works perfectly. Wonderful. Okay, so that's actually adding a, um, a formula to the worksheet. Or if we wanted to, we could leverage a built-in uh, sum function. So we'll say leverage built in sum function. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the Excel worksheet dot range D5, and then we're gonna set that value equal to the Excel app. And then we're gonna go in the worksheet function. And then we're gonna pass through the sum. And then I'm gonna pass through my range of cells and say, hey, just sum all the values that exist in my range. Cause right now they're all numbers, so we shouldn't have any issues. And so this one should come out to 10,000. And so it's gonna put it in range D5. So if I press control enter, it ran it and bam, there's our 10,000. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of cut it off right here. This is again, kind of just introducing us to this topic of writing code real time, executing code real time but I wanted to demonstrate this to you guys because I know a lot of us are coming from that VBA editor environment 
and we love the ability where we can just write our code and execute it right away. Um, sometimes with Python, that was a little bit challenging. But I think with this method, I, I mean, for the most part, I think it should do what we need to at this point. Uh, I'm going to keep exploring with it, see if we can make it a little bit better, if there's other things we can do to kind of make our lives easier. Um, but it is an ex exploration at this point. So we're just going to have to kind of wait and see, um, you know, as I kind of either figure it out or other people figure it out and, and things like that. So if you have any questions about today's video, please make sure to put those questions down in the comments below. Trying to make sure to get back to you. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, uh, we really appreciate the support. I definitely want to make sure other people can find this video because I think this is going to really help them, especially the VBA people, because I know some of them are kind of hesitant to move over to Python sometimes. I think this is, again, just making that transition that much easier. Also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.